Shannon, the next story is an interesting one out of England, uh, yeah. out of Very Well Health, uh, Spectrum 10K, uh, which is a the largest study ever done, I believe, in, in Great Britain, yeah. um, in the United Kingdom of autistic people. And uh, there's some, not it's not without controversy. Yeah, um, this is one of those, I, I to me, this is another heartbreaking story. I got to be honest. Um, and, and I, and we've included another story after to kind of even it out. Um, but you know, listen, I've experienced this before too, where we've had good intentions about something and said, you know, we want to do something at autism live and we have good intentions about it. And then someone on the spectrum will come and say, yeah, you know what? That's got some problems for me. And it's always heartbreaking because I know what our intention is, um, but I just want to remind us all how important it is that we we have to have a baseline of listening to people on the autism spectrum. But I think we have to work on finding a middle ground. And so here is the study, and the study um, is is being done by people that I consider to be very reputable. That one of the lead investigators on this is Simon Baron Cohen. Now, yeah, he's been a world-renowned expert on autism for decades. But there are people on the autism spectrum that don't uh, always agree with what Simon Baron Cohen has come out with and find that their experience is different. Because when you've met one person on the autism spectrum, you've met one person on the autism spectrum. But for those of you who don't know, Simon Baron Cohen, who is Sasha Baron Cohen's cousin, uh, if you're finding the names like, why does that sound familiar? They're actual cousins. Um, but he is the person who brought forth the theory of mind and that you could teach individuals on the autism spectrum to understand other people's perspective. Well, and there are people on the autism spectrum who say, you know, I, I'm on the spectrum and I don't have a problem with theory of mind. I understand people's perspectives better than other people. But I, I think we have to remember that that's not everyone on the autism spectrum. And so it's very hard because I don't think that everybody remembers to put an asterisk after every sentence. And Simon Baron Cohen has put out a lot about people on the spectrum having, you know, first discovering that they that there are some people on the spectrum who have difficulty with perspective taking and that you can teach it. But there are there are some self advocates who you know, it would, it would be like somebody going on the news and saying, well, all women hate cleaning, right? And, and a bunch of us would be like, yes, that's true. But there would be some women who go, no, 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 I love cleaning, right? There's just, it's just so hard to like say across the board, all anything, right? So there are people who don't appreciate Simon Baron Cohen because of that. Um, but, and he's involved in this study and it's a big genetic study where they, there's part of it that's a survey and part of it where they're taking DNA samples. And it's not only people on the autism spectrum that they're taking DNA samples from, but they're asking, would you, if you're interested in doing this, we would love as many people in your family to do this as possible. Now, to me, this is exciting research. To me, yeah, and it, it's actually it's a very large study. It's mm -hmm. um, ten thousand, I believe. Where did I? I just had had the number, um, and it, it's also in conjunction with UCLA, Shannon. Yes, and um, and so you know, I this excites me because I'm all about looking at the DNA and starting to understand things in a different way. We've talked before on the show about 23andMe and all the things that they're discovering because this large pool of people have put their DNA into 23andMe. Now, I have friends who say, I'm never going to do 23andMe because I don't know what they're going to, and do you realize when you do that, you sign away a thing and they can, you know, they can disclose your DNA, you know, and find all these things and there are all these things to worry about. And I personally have said, oh, I love it. I love it. Please use my DNA. And if you find a distant relative who's a murderer and convict them because of my DNA, woohoo! <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? And so I'm thrilled about it. And recently we covered a story on this show about how one of the things they've discovered though, is that 23andMe has been, you know, mostly people who are Caucasian. 
and that as they are beginning to find people who are from different um, ethnic backgrounds, especially people who are um, their ethnicities of color, that they're finding some very different things DNA wise that are going to have huge impact on medical procedures and what medicine is appropriate and who's more likely to have certain disorders and, and that it becomes this thing of, we want to have more people put more DNA in to know more things. So that personally excites me, but the self advocates are very concerned and saying that they, that, uh, Spectrum 10K has not been that they want them to fully disclose what they're planning to use the DNA for. They're frightened. They are concerned that later on it will mean that there will be people who will abort babies because they're able to see that DNA, they're more likely to have autism. Right. They we are- know We know this was the case with Down syndrome. Uh, yes. This is not a It's shock. very difficult, in fact, to find uh, children with Down syndrome because of the fact that uh, amniocentesis has led to so many abortions yes. uh, once autism has been diagnosed. There, um, the response from the autism community has been so strong that there is a hashtag, uh, Stop Spectrum 10K, that has developed about this. And, I, and it's hard because I can see both sides of it. I, I you know, um, Sasha Baron Cohen is quoted in this article as saying, you know, I'm paraphrasing here, but he's basically says, so what you, you don't want us to ever do genetic testing on autism or use, because it could lead to a lot of breakthroughs in terms of healthcare. Um, and I see where he's coming from, but I also, you know, really want to listen to, um, people on the spectrum with their opinions. I think it's super important to note that it's not everybody's opinion that a lot of people have already signed up for it and are excited to do it and their families are excited to do it and they and they're thrilled that their DNA is going to be taken and used in this way. I I can say that you know when when our son was diagnosed Nancy we wanted to take part in studies. We were like please let let you know our experience be useful to people after us yeah why we took part in studies several uh one involving hyperbaric oxygen chambers we did that study at pard uh we've done several studies when Wyatt was younger and and in most of those studies now the hyperbaric chamber was slightly different because there was the potential for it to have a benefit directly to the children that were in that study the hope was that it would But a a lot of times you participate in a study and you understand that you don't know what the outcome is going to come from it. But even if it's the best outcome, it's not going to have a direct benefit to your family, to your child or to you that you're you're donating your time. And, you know, in this case, your DNA in the hopes that somewhere down the line, it will lead to a breakthrough for another person. I appreciate that the self advocates are saying very poignantly there are those of us who need help now and you are spending money on something that's an if for the future and that there should be more things to benefit individuals right now. I appreciate that. And I, I hear that. Um, I think they're different. I think, you know, um, when you're talking to people who do research, there are very few research things that have a, a for sure benefit right now, because if, it, if we knew for sure it had a benefit right now, we wouldn't need to research it. Um, and so I, it's hard. I think that this is really hard, but I, I, but I think people should read up on it. I think people should form their own opinions about it. I think people should, if you're registering to do Spectrum 10K, you should inform yourself about what it is so that, and they, they have something called informed consent before you do something that you should know. Um, but if you're comfortable with it, I personally, I think if they can get to a place where they disclose what they're trying to do um, for people on the spectrum, by the way, they've been very clear that they that this research is not seeking to cure autism or to do anything to harm anybody on the autism spectrum. That is not the motive of this research. They've been very clear about that. Yeah. But the advocates are saying, but what will the research be used for once you've done this? Uh, and I think that's a harder thing to answer. 
Um, but I hope they can sort it out because I, I feel like the research is pretty important. Thanks for watching Autism Live. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. Here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.